Well, hello out there, Internet land. So today is my very first screen capture video, but it's something that I really, I searched long and hard uh, for an answer to this question. Uh, in case you guys are new to the channel, my name's Chris. I'm a spray paint artist at Alamo City Spray. Uh, we are live spray paint artists in downtown San Antonio, Texas. And part of what I do is create new images, uh, whether it be graphic art or what have you, and different designs so that people can uh, recreate these live and in person. Part of the ways that I do that is to create uh, stencils for our artwork. Now, as some of you may be aware, uh, there was a very famous uh, musician that passed away, I believe, yesterday, uh, and that's Taylor Hawkins. And Taylor Hawkins was the drummer for the Foo Fighters. And if you guys grew up in my era, you know exactly who they are. So let's do a little tribute to him. And this shows exactly what you can accomplish just doing simple Google searches and uh, exactly my process. I just typed in Taylor Hawkins. We're looking for images here. Um, of those images, I'll just scroll here and find something that we like. Um, okay, so we're just going to search for the Foo Fighters drummer, Taylor Hawkins, because he passed away. Uh, let's look at that. Oh, there's an image there. I like that image, as a matter of fact. So let's look at that. Foo Fighters drummer, okay. Ah, I like that image a lot. Let's use that. Let's click on that image. Great. Now we're going to right click. We're going to just a moment here. Okay. We're going to right click. We're going to save image and save. Boom. Okay. Now what I want to do is take you guys to a website called png to svg.com now i use this a lot there's several websites that i use this is one in particular that i enjoy just because uh it does a lot of the work for you now i'm just going to drag this image right up here to the box and it's going to automatically generate my image for me well it normally does maybe i didn't get it in the box good let's see this is my image drummer Let's take it right up here. Did it get it? I think it got it. Let's see. There it is. Okay. So it's telling me that with five colors, it can make this image. So let's just see what that looks like. Now, I'll tell you, when I deal with people or portraiture, five is generally not quite enough because you lose a lot of the detail. So let's just try. Let's generate and see what it looks like. I'm going to get rid of this ad. Okay, now this is a free program, so you can do this yourself. <clears throat> now, let's see. It's loading, loading, generating, reducing image. That does take some time sometimes. Here we are. It's generating the vector, 34%, 42%. 50%, here we go. And, okay, now you see the difference here. I lost so much definition by only having five layers. So, let's see. Uh, the maximum on this program is nine, but I really don't like going to nine. Let's see seven. Let's see where that takes us. Also, well, let's just see where seven gets us. Let's see where that takes us, guys. Let's go to generate. Let's look at that. And like I said, this is just one way to do this. Okay, reducing image. Uh, there again, sometimes it does take a moment. 21%, 27, 33, 39. Here we go. 50% it goes. Uh, well, that gives us a little bit more detail. I kind of like that. Um, there again, I want a little bit more. Uh, I feel like he deserves a little bit more than that. So let's see what colors we can get. Let's take it to nine. That's the maximum. Let's go to simplify by two because that will cut out a lot of the graininess and patchiness in the this layer. And in that layer, it'll make them more rounded. So let's let's see what that'll give us, guys. We 
generate one more time there you go reducing the image and that's something that I'll mention you know a lot of times this doesn't happen the very first go around it takes several tries to play with it manipulate the image see what you get um, and that's part of making this into your own art I mean this isn't a recreation of a photo you're taking an image and you're creating something new. now you know what this one I think gives us a it's good here we are 50% there's the change Ah, now notice here in our darker tones, it's so much more rounded and cleaner in the edges. I like this. I think that this shadow here and here give him the level of respect that he deserves for this like pop art style. So we're going to go ahead and just click download SVG and that is going to download it into your computer. Let's see, download and there it is, image to vector. And that's kind of always the way it uh, comes up. Now, from this point, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to open up our Cricut program. Okay. I use a Cricut cutting machine. Now, I do have several screens open here because I always work multitasking and everything else. So we're going to open up a new one, a brand new canvas on my Cricut. Now, where is it? There, there it is right there. There's, where are you at? See, I got so much open right now. I don't know what to do. There it is. Okay, so we've got a new canvas. I'm going to click on Upload. Okay. Upload, and it's taking a moment to even think, it looks like. I got a lot going on. Okay, we'll go to Upload Image. Browse, because it's in our computer. Okay, and here's the image to vector. So we're going to click on that. And it will upload it in here. Let's see what it does for us. Let's take a look here. Okay, there's the image. That is what it's supposed to look like. It is a cut image. So we're going to go right down here on the screen and we're going to click on upload. And there it goes. It's starting to upload. Now, from there, it has loaded it into the computer. I will highlight it and click on Add to Canvas. Okay. Sometimes it takes a moment to load the canvas. Okay, we are uploaded to the canvas. So now... Now, here's something important, guys. One thing to think about is uh, registration, lining up layers, and keeping things together. Now, I do this inside of uh, my design space, Cricut design space software. And the first thing I'm going to do, everything comes in a group. So I'm going to size it to my size. And that's going to be right up here at the top of the screen where it says size. And the width is what I'm going to work with. I plan on putting this on a 12 by 16 canvas. So I know that my... Maximum cutting width of my Cricut machine is 11 and a half inches. So I'm going to click in 11 and a half inches. And that automatically locks me in over here and transforms everything else. Now it's 11.7 inches high, 11.5 wide. That fits within the parameters of my cutting machine. So next I come to the left. I click on shapes. And you can choose any shape that you like. I generally choose a square just because it's there and it's easy. Uh okay where's our square there's our square i'm going to move it to the top left and i will resize it i'll take it down to about a half an inch and come to the right side and duplicate that square all right now that i've duplicated the square i'll drag it to the right hand side it doesn't have to come all the way to the edge but i'll do that highlight using my shift key i will highlight both squares let me see if it let me, okay. I highlight both squares, come down and click attach. Now, these two are attached to one single layer. They're connected together. I will then come down, click on my image, move my image near, right near them. Okay. All right. Ungroup my image. Now, all of these layers will be divided, and I can do things individual, or with individual layers instead of all in one image 
On our attached squares, we now see that if we scroll down, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, was it eight, nine layers. And yeah, that's right. We specified nine layers. So we have nine layers, which means I need to duplicate these registration marks nine, or eight more times. So duplicate times eight. One, let's see, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. I now have eight sets of them. Now I'm going to drag my image out of the way. Or actually, you know what? I've already, uh, ah, I got to quit that. I can't. That's funny. So now that you have your registration marks grouped, okay, uh, let's go up to it and see how it looks. Let's see what it looks like on the menu. At the very top, we have, well, there's our image vector group, and let's see, there's our attached squares right here on the right. So what we're going to need to do is we see that we need nine sets of these because we have nine layers in our uh, in our stencil. So let's duplicate these. Okay, we have the attached squares highlighted. Let's duplicate eight times. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Times I click the button. Sometimes it lags a little, by the way, guys. Now, while that's happened, I'm going to scoot the image just out of the way a little bit. And I'll show you why. Once you do that and it gets done loading all the uh, squares. See, it grabbed one set of my squares. <laughs> I'm going to move them up to the top. All right. And I'm going to grab that. Image. All right, now I've got the image out of the way. So what I plan on doing is I'm come up here and highlight my squares. Click on align. Align to the left. Click align again. Align to the top. Now this will make all eight layers stacked on top of each other, or all nine layers stacked on top of each other. Here we are. Now our image we want to put right directly underneath these squares. Okay. Now that we've done that, we are going to have to separate these layers. So we'll click on our group. Click ungroup. That will separate each layer so that we can work with them individually. Okay. So now we'll come up here to our attached squares. Highlight one set of attachments. Hold the shift key and highlight one layer. Click weld. We'll continue to do this repeatedly for each layer. And it takes a moment to load. So wait and notice that there's a color change. Just It just happened. Okay, that means that layer was welded. So now that that's happened, your menu changes a little bit. Scroll up a little bit. Grab that next set of attached squares. Highlight your next layer and click weld. Now, like I say, it takes just a moment to change. Notice the color on this stuff changes slightly. See, there's the change. Okay, notice that your registration marks are a different color now. They're blue because that set has been welded. Okay, on our menu, we'll scroll back up again. Highlight a set of attached squares. Highlight the next layer. And click weld. Wait for that to change. Wait for our registration marks here to uh, change color and our design to go through that process. There's our purple layer. It looks like it has just changed. Okay. And we just continue this process for each layer. Highlight and highlight and weld. Scroll up again. That'll change soon. And where is it? Come on now. Sometimes some layers take longer than other layers. And there it went. Okay. So now we'll slide up, grab the next set of attached squares, highlight my next layer, click weld. There we are. And as you see, I get a little bit of sticky keys sometimes. All right. That has now been welded. Our menu has shifted. We'll scroll up, grab another set. Make this well. Each layer, and this is sometimes a time-consuming process just to let everything happen on its own. 
Uh, your computer just has to be fast enough to do that. And as you see, I'm running recordings and videos and uploading and doing all kinds of things at one time. So sometimes I get a little bit of lag in mine. Um, here we are. It looks like we only have one or two layers left to attach. And I will highlight this layer and weld. Wait for that to attach. Okay, that has now happened, it looks like it. There it goes. Menu shift. Scroll up. Looks like this is our last layer. As you can see right above it, we're at the weld results. That means that uh, that's the last one. I'll go ahead and highlight our last layer. Click weld. Now what we've done, guys, is we've attached registration marks to each layer so that they'll all stack up on each other once our cutting machine uh, plots them out and cuts it and does everything for us. Uh, okay, the attachments are now final, it appears. Let's see. And it looks like I... Ah, we do have one extra layer. Let's see. Okay. There's our attachment. There's our weld. And we wait for that to happen now. See, I must be holding down that key too much because it's trying to get me the sticky keys. All right. There's the last and final layer that has now been welded. Let's scroll through and just make sure that everything says weld results. It does. It all says weld results. Now, what I like to do at this point is select all and group. Now we can move everything in unison and we won't be shifting any of the layers individually. Um, we're going to look at our size. Now we're going to come back up here to width. We did want 11.5 for our width, so we're going to make sure that that hasn't changed. And it did a little bit. We'll change it back. Okay, now we've shifted everything back to 11.5. Uh, everything looks nice. Now, I'm going to, the very first thing I like to do is go to my group and hide all the layers. Individually, we're going to check each layer for holes and things that might be problems. So, we'll unhide that layer. Now, let's zoom out just a touch so we can see the whole thing, or at least most of it. Okay, and we can see that's a pretty clean layer. We've got nice... Uh, large pieces they're going to be cut out not a lot of tiny holes within things so okay that layer is good let's check the next let's toggle these on and off that layer looks pretty good let's go to the blue layer that layer looks pretty clean as well now i will do some advanced tutorials on this on how to clean up some layers that are not so perfect uh, but this is your basic rundown here guys this layer looks good now i will tell you this layer may cause a few problems only because as you see you've got a hole here inside of this big patch that's going to get cut out so you're going to lose a lot most of the time what happens uh in that case is that's a spot that would have been a solid orange anyway and your next highlight will cover up that area so it's not that big a deal you just got to play with it to find out um okay let's toggle that one off check the next uh layer now, this layer, I can look at and tell that it's mostly just a little bit of line work and highlight. We probably do not need this layer. I believe that I'm going to leave this layer out, okay, because it just doesn't look uh, productive to me to cut that on the machine. Let's check the next layer. Okay, here, this is such a small amount. It looks like it's just tiny little pink highlights. We're not real sure if that's going to be something we're going to need or not. Let's zoom out a little bit more. Okay, no, this is the shirt. We do need parts of that shirt. And we also are going to need some of those highlights. So we'll leave that layer uh, intact. Now, uh, some of those choppy lines take a while to cut. See, this is another layer. We don't need that. It's just some lines. Uh, lines we'll just leave alone because the machine doesn't like them and neither does the spray so it looks to me like guys we've got some or some uh, layers here that we could just get rid of so what i'm gonna do let me hide this okay um yeah we're just gonna get rid of this guys we don't need it at all i'm gonna highlight that layer i'm gonna delete it there you go well i said i was there it is it's lagging but it's happening um let's turn this one on see what we're dealing with this is one we're going to delete so we will select the layer go to delete the next layer we will turn on and this is our 
first layer of line work, I believe. Select it, click delete. I don't need any of those at all. So let's count the layers that were left. We'll turn them all back on and see what we've got here. Um, let's go all the way to the top. Okay, I toggled everything on. Now, if you'll notice, guys, yeah, if you'll notice there, with even deleting the layers that we did, this still looks like a good image. So now let's count the let's count the layers. Let's look and see what we've got. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six layers. So uh, we're only going to need to cut six layers. All we've got to do, guys, first, let's go save because we always want to save. And let's title this Taylor. There you go. Save our project before we go any further. All that's left to do is click make it. So let's do that. Sorting projects into matte by color. I will leave this in real time so that you can see about how long it takes to do a project like this. And there you are. Okay. Here are all your, on the left-hand side of the screen, here are all of your, I always click OK. It tells you that some of them are larger than a 12 by 12. That's okay. We've got a larger mat than that. So uh, we're using a 24-inch mat. So we're going to look at these colors. We've got black. We've got pink. We've got orange. We've got a gray. We've got an oasis blue and a magenta. We have all of those in our spray paint, and that's what we Yeah, at this point, guys, we look at our layers. We click uh, make it. We just make sure that everything looks good and looks the placement looks okay on our mat. It generally will. We made it to fit the mat size. You can click each layer and inspect each layer if you like individually. So here's our blue layer, and it shows you what's going to cut out and what's not. So once you're done, guys, you just click continue. Uh, at continue, you follow your normal cutting machines uh, practices, and uh, you'll have a stencil when you're done. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Sit tight, guys, while we cut.